Pedro Pascal, Bella Ramsey delivered characters on screen to a point where it was in disbelief of how fantastic they were. They killed it. They were absolutely immersive in their roles. They brought a level to Joel and Ellie that we didn't get in the game. And this is no shade to Troy Baker, Ashley Johnson. What they did was phenomenal and untouchable. But what Bella Ramsey and Pedro Pascal have done is carved their own path, yet still make it relatable to what we've seen before. Hello and welcome to the movie podcast after show for The Last of Us, episode nine. We are here. We are at the end. Uh, if you're listening to this episode, that means you're probably still crying. So if you want to take a couple minutes to wipe those tears, um, settle back in, uh, we'll give you that time. We're going to give a 30 minute break within this episode now until we get started. That's very, that's very generous. Okay. So, oh, sorry. I'm, I'm interrupting the quiet time. I'll, I'll give the quiet time now. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> and of course, I am joined by my Cordycep compadres once again, Daniel and Anthony. Anthony, how are you doing today? I thought I would have more tears, but you know what? I have no tears. Today's, oh. do you know, we were talking about crying. I have no tears for those people, the fireflies. I, I'm i glad things happened to them. We're going to get into <laughs> it. I, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm done with the tears. Now it's all... These are blood tears. Yeah, you're oh like L'Oreal goodness. kids right now. No tears for you. I get it. I get it. Save your tears for another day. <laughs> Daniel, how are you today? I'm good. Honestly, I can't believe we're here. Like, this is something that we, you know, we've been on this journey since January. And to be here talking about the finale, having the incredible guests who have joined us along the way on this journey with Lamar and with Troy, um, it's been it's been pretty amazing and to be talking about this this is i think the episode you know why the last of us is special but when you get to the ending this final moment of the last of us this final episode of the last of us this final chapter is really where you feel and where you realize this is one of the best things i'm ever going to experience you are 100 percent correct um the final episode brings a lot of pain a lot of struggle but at the same time it leaves the door so open that all you can do is just not look through it because you're so scared of what could possibly happen. Um, I I remember finishing the game and just my jaw being on the floor. And I had, even though I knew what was going to happen, I had the exact same reaction while watching the show. I was stunned. I was like, this is, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And I'm so excited to read people's reactions to see how people feel about this ending because it's a conversation starter like no other. I don't think anyone expected this type of ending. Like I didn't yeah. even expect this type of ending in the game while I was actually participating in the ending. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like this is one of those endings that you, you. I think a lot of people expected it to be like a little bit of a, a hopeful ending and and have some sort of like enlightenment to what is going to happen in this world and maybe Ellie being that cure. Uh, yeah, no, it it's more uh, tragedy for everyone. You know, it's, it's so hard. It's so hard. I, I know we're going to talk all about it, Jay. So I'm going to let you do your thing. Cause there's so much to talk about. There's, there's a lot so to, talk much about. to talk about. There is a lot. And I appreciate that. But before we get to what the last of us is all about, why don't we talk a little bit about who we are? We are the movie podcast. If you are just discovering us, hello, hi, how are you doing? If you're watching us on YouTube, thank you so much. If you could leave us a like, maybe even a comment, let us know how we're doing, what you thought about the episode as well. It would really, really mean a lot. If you are following us on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter, you'll be following us at the movie podcast. And you also can leave us a like, you can leave us a comment. And we'd love for that as well. We have a lot of contests that come and go. So if you're in Canada, typically that's where our contests are. Definitely keep an eye out because you could be a winner. And, you know, winning is great. I, I've heard that from some people. Winning is everything. It is. Winning is the only thing that matters. It is. You know? If you're not winning, you're losing. So that's, that's what, what, what winners do. Absolutely. That's, Absolutely. that's the winning attitude, I think. You know, that's how winning is done. That's how winning as, is done. That's how winning is done. That's all I got for you. Uh, no, that's fair. Thank you so much. Uh, what else do we have? I feel like there's something that I'm forgetting. Uh, do you have I any mean, announcements, Daniel? There's some stuff going on. You know, there's some incredible reviews out. You know, if you want to hear our thoughts on Scream 6, go check it out. We have some incredible coverage from the Shazam red carpet in Canada. We got to talk to Zachary Levi and Lucy Liu. You know, no big deal. Just some pretty huge superheroes and icons that, you know, got to hang out with us on their show. And, of course, we spoke about it a little bit earlier in this episode, but Troy Baker 
Joel himself from the Last of Us games. And of course, he was plays uh, James in last week's episode. We got to talk to him last week. A couple weeks ago, we had Lamar Johnson, who plays Henry. So there is some incredible Last of Us specific episodes out now for you to listen to. If you cannot, you know, if you cannot, you know, fit your your Last of Us fix, we got you covered. There's lots to listen to. And we have lots more reviews coming your way this week with our, uh, sorry, with our review of Shazam! Fury of the Gods. And of course, our interview with Rachel Zegler, Asher Angel, and Jack Dylan Grazer from Shazam! So there's lots of interviews happening. Lots more giveaways going on. The Super Mario Brothers movie is coming. So there's lots to look forward to. Again, there's so much. Why would you go anywhere else? Is Why would what you go anywhere saying. else? Absolutely. Just stay uh, listening to the movie podcast 24-7. We have more than enough episodes to get you through your day and through your nights if you want to listen day to night. We there are definitely you. episodes that you've missed, person who's listening. So maybe you should oh, listen to them. You should. Yeah. Go go from the very beginning. You know, Absolutely. Once you're finished, start again. Listen to them in reverse. <laughs> start again and then critique us on how bad we were in the beginning and how much better yes. we got. That, I mean, it's growth. It's At the growth. end of the day, it's growth. It's growth like a cordyceps. Ooh. Not like mushroom prices this year oh, because those are going down. Those are going down, right? You yeah. have the... It all, it all comes it together. Mushroom, mushroomcorp.net? No, man. It's Mushroom Council, man. Mushroom Council. Oh, like, put God. some respect on the mushroomcouncil.org. Fungi, <laughs> the fungi uh, friends, you know? All right. Well, you know what? Let's, let's talk a little bit about this episode here. So we're at the season finale for the last of us. This is such a this is such a moment. This is every week I'm having people text me saying that 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 I've never played the game how much they're in love with this show, especially episode 8 I think was truly Bella's flowers. Like she really got everything that she more needed. More flowers. More flowers than she ever needed and it's like it's it's insane. Like what a crazy episode that was. Here we are finally at the end and it is it starts off so powerfully we're introduced to this woman running away from the infected and for those viewers out there who don't know who that is that is ashley johnson aka ellie from the last of us video games from the last of us part one and the last of us part two you'll also recognize her from a lot of other work that she's done in, in mainstream media uh, avengers comes to mind and of course if you're a big fan of recessed gretchen grundelier or gretchen Grundler, of course <laughs> uh is, is a big name that uh, you'll be hearing a lot also but man Ashley Johnson. So we already knew that she was going to be in the show, just like Troy Baker was. We don't really know who she was going to be. Obviously, everyone kind of assumed like, oh, it'd be really cool if she played Ellie's mom and she's pregnant. She's running around. I think it's pretty obvious here. Yeah, she's about to give birth to Ellie. She walks into this house. She's running around screaming. Everything's happening. And unfortunately, an infected person breaks through the door, gets to the fighting. She's she's trying to fight off the, and she's giving birth at the exact same time uh this is kind of i think what rihanna went through at the super bowl very very similar when she was doing the halftime show this this and that are very very <laughs> comparable i would say at this point um so yeah she kills this infected has the baby but realizes the baby is still attached to her via the umbilical cord and she's got this bite on her leg crazy moment a um, couple of minutes, you know, a couple hours go by. Marlene, a younger Marlene, finds her. Her name's Anna. They talk, and it's all of a sudden like, hey, listen, you need to take care of her. Her name is Ellie, and just just watch over her, but you need to kill me right away. This moment is intense. It's crazy. We get the origin story really now for Ellie, something that we did not get in the game. This is such a pivotal moment. We kind of understand and figure out how could it have happened? What happened here? You know, the bite occurred after birth, but still attaching the umbilical cord. There's so many things that can kind of happen here. So Daniel, I'd love to get your, your thoughts and ideas about this opening sequence. Immediately when this episode starts and you see Ashley Johnson, I think this, my, my, I'm literally just getting goosebumps thinking about it. It's so, it's so magical because again, we had Troy Baker, we have Ashley Johnson, and these are, you know, figuratively, the 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 parents of who Joel and Ellie are, they have brought them from like from 2010, whenever they were cast in this, to release in 2013, and then have lived these characters all these years. And you know, we always talk about you know you know paying respect to what's come before, and sometimes we'll see that. You know, I, I don't know why this one comes to mind, but in Mulan, for example, we had Ming Na Wen show up in the live action remake in a little cameo role, and it's always I think nice when you have. That little, like, you're paying respect to the next person who's, you know, taking the baton and running with it, right? And to literally have Ashley Johnson portray Ellie's mother 
what a what a beautiful gift to Ashley Johnson. What a beautiful lineage for the show to carry on in their name and in their image, saying like, you know, this character literally came from you, and now you are bringing life to it in the show. And I just think that was such inspired casting. I think it was such a beautiful move on the showrunners and everyone involved in that. And to see Ashley Johnson again, who is a fantastic actor in her own regard, um, get to shine in this opening of the scene. You know, we had to wait for her. We had to wait for Ashley to get her moment. It was very kept secret, right? Like we didn't get to see it until, you know, this moment. There's little teases here and there, but to see this is really cool. And to really get to genesis of why Ellie is the way that she is, you know, her being bits and, you know, being connected through the umbilical cord still, that really is, you know, background that we did not get on the game side to now have it in the show side. It's really interesting because you're also wondering, okay, is this the only reason why that, you know, she's been able to grow with cordyceps her whole life? Or is there something else special within Ellie that makes her the way that she is? But yeah, what a what a great opening. What a fantastic, you know, to tie everything together from, you know, it's a perfect circle of just full circle moment of, you know, Ashley Johnson birthing this character and now passing the baton to Bella Ramsey. Yeah, exactly that. It was a it's a crazy moment. But on top of that, it's it's another sad thing where we don't get to see Ashley Johnson and Ellie you know, act together on screen, just like we didn't get to see Joel, as I add, Pedro Pascal and Troy Baker get to act on screen. But I almost kind of prefer it this way. It's it's just it's just that what if, but at the same time, it, it, it totally makes sense. Uh, Anthony, what about yourself? How was this opening sequence for you? It was uh, really, really well done. I didn't expect uh, Ashley to be the mother of Ellie. And if it, it's fitting, like it works well. And probably the most determined cordycep I've ever seen on screen, chase, uh, chase Ellie's mom for the, for the good, I, I want to say an hour or two, because she was trapped in that house and that cordycep knew exactly where she's hiding. Uh, interesting way of kind of like creating the, the immune in Ellie, especially with the birth happening at the same time as the bite. So there's really cool concept there. I, totally believed it i totally bought into it like it, it makes sense uh, especially with everything that's happened in this world but yeah i think it's you know ashley johnson and uh troy baker they've had they these creators gave them opportunity to be part of the show and it wasn't like a oh they were background saying hi like we're we're a cordyceps or Troy Troy saying that he he didn't want to be a clicker and thank God he wasn't a clicker. It's just nice that they got more than what usually a lot of people who are in this in the video game world or any type of world where it is in transition to the big screen or the small screen in this case um, to get the opportunity to be actually be part of it and actually make an impact on it rather than just being an actor in the background or someone who just kind of like waves their hand it's it, it means a lot so it's it's really nice to see absolutely this is a this is such a fun moment uh you know we cut over to back to ellie kind of and she's this is just a, just like in the game as well they're on the bridge ellie's kind of not paying attention she's hearing joel like joel and joel's like calling her and we start to kind of walk towards the hospital. We know that the end of this this period, this whole journey is now coming to an end. We're so close. Um, but as they're kind of on their way there, one of my favorite sequences in the game occurs. And it's such a beautiful moment because it's so it can seem so insignificant, but when you really look at the bigger picture of it, it is it is stunning. And they get into this building, they're they're climbing up, up and higher, higher. It's it's construction building. And Ellie like freaks out. She's like, oh my God, oh my God, what is this? And she runs over to this area and there's a giraffe there. And it's it's such a it's such a silly thing. But when you think about this world, animals really aren't out there anymore. There's they they've been pretty much taken away. Like what what else is gonna be happening? And it's such a sweet and beautiful moment in this episode of Joel and Ellie just kind of interacting with this giraffe and she's feeding it and she's just she's being a kid and in all yeah. the madness that's kind of happened she hasn't really got that opportunity so this moment of Ellie just being a child and kind of being at the zoo in a way is is beautiful what a sense of wonder for Ellie right scares the shit out of Joel though like I mean Ellie just give a little bit of a warning you know just like hey Joel giraffes like not just not just like scare the hell out of the guy and leave him hanging there which again it's exactly like how it is in the game and it, it blows me away to the, still we're nine episodes in we're wrapping up the season finale and this show is still doing things that are beat for beat from the game but making it their own and again this scene i think is quintessential to 
Joel and Ellie's relationship. It's just one of those moments. It is the last of us. When I think of this game and thinking of those final moments leading to the very end of this whole journey that we've been on, this is really Ellie's last moment of pure innocence. I really do believe that. This is the last moment of her being a child and having that wonder part of who she is. The giraffes is that last moment because as we know in the games and as we know what's to come, there's always going to be a seed of doubt within her. And I think this is really the closest her and Joel will ever be in sharing just nothing but love for one another without any other doubts in mind. Yeah. Anthony, what about yourself? I thought it was uh, fantastic to see. I'm glad they kept the, the whole sequence in there. I think when you play the game for the first time and you see that moment of with the giraffe, it, there's two things that come to mind. A, yes, Ellie being able to experience the zoo as a kid and actually have this, um, you know, this, this, this moment with, with an animal that usually would have been behind cages or you would have had to go and to a, a zoo and see it. Um, it was beautiful. It's magical. It does all the things and it's in the middle of the city. So it just adds like the wonder of these animals yeah. being loose. Another thing that came to mind is like, where did these animals go after everyone left or everyone was infected? So, there's a there's a bunch of zoo animals surrounding the land, lions, tigers, bears, and in this case, oh my. giraffes. So um, it just puts another uh, element to this world where shit, like things that you would normally not experience in the real world, you are now experiencing in this world. So it's yeah. very very unique. But yeah, like it was a moment that both of them share. I think Joel showcases his fear. Ellie's you know, her, her kindness at heart in the sense that she, you know, she was so calm and she was ready to take this uh, or feed the giraffe. It just showcases another element that maybe Joel kind of saw in Sarah and having this father daughter bond at this right moment at this right time. I think there is another bond that happens, especially number two. I don't know if that, that in the second game, that moment takes place after this or before this so it's um it's interesting i just uh thought of it right now it's after i know i know the moment i know we won't spoil i know we're talking about yeah. spoilers but it's definitely afterwards yeah yeah, yeah. but it's, it's another great moment which i'm hoping in season two they keep as well um you know from from here from this point onward it, it's kind of just a bit of a roller coaster dive like it immediately just kind of picks up uh but there's this there's a quick moment here that i just wanted to touch on where um, Joel completely breaks down his shell to Ellie and and kind of just tells her that you know the reason for that that's that that scar on his head and why he has the hearing is because he tried taking his own life and it's a it's a very personal moment and it's and, and I love this moment because you know he even says like I don't know why I'm telling you this and then Ellie's like you know why you're telling me this and it, it's such a sweet moment and it was a harrowing moment as well i just didn't expect this to happen at this point but joel has finally let his guard down he's like listen i'm all in i'm i'm here for you like this is where you know that he will literally even though you knew before he will do anything for her because he's now told her everything about himself there's nothing left once you've told somebody that part of yourself what else is there to tell and then they're they're kind of ambushed and it cuts immediately into the hospital after turns out some fireflies just saw them and they didn't know who they were um Ellie is being prepped for surgery at this point. And Joel is like, well, what do you mean? And they find out that, you know, the, the cordyceps are in her brain and the infection that's coming, it's kind of fighting it because I guess it already presumes that she is infected. So there's a lot of that happening and they're able to hopefully make a cure out of this. But because the cordyceps are in the brain to make this cure happen, it does mean we would lose Ellie. And once Joel kind of understands that part of it, you can tell a, a flip, just a switch just flips in his mind. He's being escorted out of the building and he goes on a rampage. This man literally kills every single firefly that's in his way. And it's such a crazy action packed moment. He, nothing is stopping him. He's literally like, where is she? Where is she going? Kill, kill, kill gets into the hospital room. The doctor immediately, the surgeon is like, you need to stop. Like we can save millions of lives here. Like you need to stop. Kills the doctor, takes Ellie, gets out of there. Marlene interjects and is like, you, you don't know what you're doing. Like, like, she'll never forgive you for this. Like, you need to stop. Takes Marlene out, 
They go on the road. They're driving away. Ellie's waking up. She's in her hospital again. She's like, what happened? Joel tries to explain, oh, you know, there's so many of you out there. There were a bunch of people there that had the same thing, uh, but they can't find a cure. It's not possible. Uh, hospital got attacked by raiders, so I wasn't able to, to take your clothes with me. Crazy sequence, just like in the game. Anthony, I'd, I'd love to get your thoughts on this part as well. I, I kept thinking while it was happening, what would I do in a situation like this? Um, and and do you believe it, right? It, like, do you believe that a cure could be made? Right. There's also this chance. It's, it's literally a 50-50 chance. We don't really know. And even that doctor didn't know. Um, but there was a lot of hope in ha it happening, you know. But I think, you know, what would I do in a situation where, A, I wasn't told, and even Ellie wasn't told that her life was going to end. You know, I, they didn't tell her that. They didn't give her that expectation. Um, and they were really quick on prepping her, right? Like, it was something that they were aware of and they knew this was something that we had to do because if anyone heard about it, or if she knew about it what would be her reaction um joel you know you, you guys watched the first terminator you remember when the terminator goes into the cop station and kills every single cop inside that station that was joel uh, joel was the terminator <laughs> yeah he yeah. killed everyone he really was like there he was invincible at that moment there was no firefly that could shoot him he had every single weapon known to man. Yeah, cheat edit. codes turned on, modifiers, everything exactly. was on. Exactly. Yeah. Um, all, all weapons unlocked. Like, he's just, he he turned to John Wick. Like, he was just yes. like, I am, like, you you messed with the one thing that I love in this world, and I'm coming for you. And it shows the sign of, uh, I'm going to say, it's, it's a little bit of selfishness, too. Because Joel doesn't. Oh, definitely. Joel looks at Ellie as his daughter and not as the person she is and what she really wanted to do i think i think if ellie had the option of choosing to give this cure for her life i think she would because that was her purpose and that was what really drive her to get to the destination but i think joel wanted her to himself because he didn't have he lost his daughter and he wanted another chance it's these 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 um elements that kind of conflict with you and you don't know which road to go down and you know, Ellie, you know, when she hears that Joel or once once Ellie finds out that, hey, there there was other ones like me and they were they had they were immune. She just kind of didn't feel it special anymore. And she lost that hope for herself as well as this, you know, purpose that she was driving towards. Right. Um, yeah. But like the we, we talked about we've done it many times uh, just to be transparent. The doctor scene. um, you know, we've we played the game many times. We have blown away that doctor more times than I can actually remember. So I you think especially as, as a group, we have determined that we would go save Ellie. Oh, I mean, listen, knowing what happens in this game and seeing, you know, people's reactions to this ending, everyone's cheering for Joel. Yeah. What Joel is doing is awful. Absolutely awful. Because he's not only killing the one chance that humanity has to survive, we think. He is just doing it in such brutal fashion, and it's incredible how fast Joel can revert to that. I'm in. I'm saving Sarah in my head right now. You know, yeah. I am saving the one person in my life I couldn't save them before. So I have 20 years worth of rage of that moment of not being able to save them, and I'm coming for you with every gun and moment and being of in my in my soul. It's it's an incredible moment terrifying especially because i find the show has been you know on the game side it's very violent it's a very violent game there are very violent moments in the show but i think the show is very light on the violence to make sure it really highlights those moments right i think of you know when when henry kills his brother and then kills himself i think of ellie last week chopping david and hacking him to pieces um and then I think of this moment. This show really does does an incredible job of highlighting the violence, so it really does shock you when it happens. It's genuine just fear when yeah. it happens. Yeah, no, abs I, I, that's so correct. And it's just the, the the focus on storytelling, the focus on character development is is a lot more prioritized than the violence that we get to experience in the game. And I get it. I mean, to keep the game interesting, you can't just you know have only story you have to have that playable element of it that the show luckily doesn't need to leverage too much on that's why we don't have 
you know, hordes of infected scenes. We mm-hmm. just had that one major infected moment. But ever since then, it's just one or two infected and like one clicker really here and there. So it's been very light on that. But initially when I watched the show, I remember being like, oh, it, I miss those elements of it. But, you know, watching it through, I'm like, no, it makes total sense. This is what it was about. I have to reset my expectations of I'm not going to be getting the exact game, that exact 18 hour game into this. I'm going to be getting what is actually necessary to pro- propel this story forward. And, you know, from this moment here, we we kind of get to the, the, the final moment of the game, which always just... Like I could watch that those last 30 seconds of this game or the show over and over again, because it's just so, it's so alarming. Um, before, before, before you say I do, anything though, Shay, yes, Daniel, I, I, just, I, want, I just want to ask you guys quickly, do you guys think Ellie had the cure within her? Like, do you, do you believe that there was something inside of her that could have been an antidote or a vaccine for this virus. I think they would have been able to get really close with it. I think um, because they're taking her life, they have more of a chance to build upon whatever cure or necessity they need. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't know if it would have been 100%. But I do believe that they would have had at least a step forward than they've had in the last 20 years. Anthony, how about you? It's, it's interesting. It, when I look at a cure, does it cure everyone is it like something that you have to apply right away you know what i'm saying like i can't i can't imagine where a, fu- a, a bloater would automatically be cured if they gave or just just i guess make you immune to it right yeah it'll just make you immune like anyone who is new um i think so i think the stakes were high enough to warrant it i just and i think what we've learned in in the second um in the second game, there's a lot more that we can't really dive into unless you've played the game. You know what we're talking about. But I uh, I would say yes. Interesting. I feel like I don't I don't think she would. Like I think that I think I, I honestly think that they would get close, like what Shay was saying, but I don't think it would have given the results that they had hoped for, which is also tragic in its own right. But again, we don't know and we'll never know. I, I expect tragedy in every corner when it comes to The Last of Us. I don't expect anything, any happy endings here. No. Yeah, no, and I don't think the not. creators, I think that's just the, you know, they wanted you to feel or, you know, have a direction of, okay, maybe it would cure or not cure. But I think they don't even know, you know. But, you know, it's good no. to be hopeful. You guys clearly want this dystopian world. I, I don't, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't want the dystopian world. I just know what to you expect. You are not hopeful, my expectations, man. My expectations. No. I'm learning from you. <laughs> You know, if Ellie's if Ellie's immune, there there is hope. There is something inside her that absolutely. You know, they went to the friggin' moon, man. Well, who did? The world, America, the, you know, oh, the world, and the Mar- for whoever. <laughs> but you know, what I'm saying, like, we, we I can mean, go they to went the to the moon in the show. <laughs> like, I don't remember that sequence. What what yeah. episode no, was that? You're right. You never know. But it's. Uh, I'm also just thinking. It's one doctor. It's one person. Yeah. Like that's a huge roll of the dice. But again even if there's a fraction of hope and just like Riley says, like you, you fight no matter how much, like how much time you have, you're going to fight and they're going to fight to find a cure no matter what it takes. So yeah. who knows? Right? I mean, he did his medical school in the Caribbean. So we, can we really trust him? You know? Yeah. And I mean, poor guy. I mean, we did it in the games and he's long gone in the show too. Like he did not, uh, he, didn't he did not survive. No, he did not, no. Survive. not at all. No. No. no, horrible death. Uh, but we get to the final moment in this game where they're, they're clearly getting towards Jackson. Um, They're climbing up, and Ellie's just like, listen, I got to tell you something. I talked to you about something, you know. She tells a story about Riley. She tells her what happened, and she says that, you know, she's the one that had to end Riley's life when Riley fully turned. And when she kind of breaks that bond, when she not breaks that moment and and tells the complete 100% truth, just like how Joel did, you know, mere days or weeks ago, whenever it was, and she says to him, look, swear to me, that everything you said about the fireflies is true. And you hear that, you hear that guitar in the background just, just strumming away. Gustavo just going at it. And he's just prepping you for heartbreak. And Joel just looks at her. He's like, I swear. And then Ellie just kind of looks back and he's like, okay. Cut to black. Music starts playing. Credits start rolling. What a moment. I remember, you know, there's been so many discussions post game when this moment happened back in 2013 for a lot of people 
of how they felt. And I, I was one of those people that I was like, you know what? I'm good here. Like I got the story that I needed. I'm don't give me a part two. I'm, I'm well adjusted. I was wrong. Like I love part two. Part two is phenomenal to me and I'm so glad we got it. But I'm curious now for you guys, you know, Dame, I'll start with you. When you witnessed this moment in the game to when you witnessed this moment in the show, was it pretty much the same for you? Like, did you have the exact same reaction and how did you feel about it? It's interesting because we've all played the game. We've all experienced that moment where you're just there, just like completely drained of all, all feeling right. You're conflicted. And I think that's where you are at this ending. It's like, you want Ellie to be alive. You want, you want Joel and Ellie to, to be here forever together and live this life. But Joel now is living with the weight of this giant lie and the repercussions of what he's done um, are going to be something that he's always going to be thinking of because he killed a lot of people. And not only did he kill a lot of people, he killed humanity's only, you know, potential chance at survival. And thinking about that, it's such a double-edged sword ending. You're so happy they made it. Th they went on this journey together. You're so happy that they're together but they're all on the sly. And I think Bella Ramsey just so beautifully plays that just one little, you know, shadow of a doubt that it's at the very back of her mind that she'll always wonder. She'll never really know. Did Joel lie to her? What happened at the hospital? That is always going to be something that she's going to live with, whether she believes him or not. You're always going to think about that. And us is tragic because you're happy they're together, but you're also just like, but look how it had to happen. And again, for those of us who knows what, what is to come in the part two, um, you know what comes in part two with um, you know, with that story. But man, what an ending perfectly executed, perfectly, you know, encapsulate encapsulates everything that made the game special. And again, Pedro and, and Bella are just incredible. Yeah. Wow. Well said. Uh Anthony, what about yourself? How is the ending for you? Game show? everything it's exactly like the game it, it still leaves like a mark on you after you've played it and now you've watched it it's a moment where you don't know what's to ne come next you know general audience doesn't know what's next for these two uh i still think ellie doesn't believe joel just just with the eye movement and the way she kind of like starts interacting with them after all the events have happened there's something maybe it's intuition that she feels that there's something off and, you know, she'll at this moment, she doesn't know exactly how she should feel with Joel. Joel's more open with her now. Like he's telling her, Oh, you and Sarah would be friends and this and that. So, so much more open than ever before. And he's comfortable with the decision he made. Uh, there is this lie, but I feel like he thinks he's smarter than the lie and he could get away with it. But, you know, lies come back and bite you in the ass. And mm -hmm. I think that's where we'll see what happens with season two. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a saying they run the house a lot, you know, lies come back and bite you in the ass. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're, you're 100% right. I mean, there's going to be consequences to this and, I, I for one, am so excited to see what they do with season two. This was such a moment for me in the game where I was, like, like I said, I was just shocked. I was stunned. My jaw was on the floor. But when they delivered it in this show the exact same way, I, I was shook. I couldn't believe it, how, how accurately they did it. So we're here at the end. The show is done. We had a wonderful nine episodes. And I think a lot of people, like a lot were saying, you know, we kept hearing, like, there's so much story left in this game. And I think what this show has done a really good job of telling us is that the really the, the skeleton or the core elements of the story are told here. You may not be getting a lot of the other stuff, but we did get a lot more background on things that we didn't know we needed. We got so much more. Episode three alone kind of just gives it to you that way. It, it, it breaks away from the game in such a way where you get so much more of a story while still not sacrificing the overall message and arcing themes that we got in the game. So I'm now curious for you guys, not that we're here, now that we're at the end of season one, how would you, what would you, what would you give this show if we had to give it our, our <laughs> official ratings, our official recommendations and, and Anthony, I'd love to start with you. Yeah, this is a real gem. 
for a TV series. And there's a lot of TV series out there that kind of go around this. They talk about zombies and all that, like the, some sort of mass uh, extinction of people. But I think this this leaves an impact. It's culturally left an impact for a lot of people. And I think um, a lot of people got excited about this whole franchise and the series and wanting more and more stories and who knows where they go from here with the, with the spinoffs, but I'm so glad that people embraced it. I think that was, you know, when we go back to our first re- our review for this, you know, I said that this is going to be open for a huge audience. This is like every single age group, uh, male, female, whatever it is open for everyone and they're going to either like it or don't. And I'm so glad that everyone does. Um, but yeah, the, this is a real gem for me. It's fantastic. So well shot, so well acted. Uh, production value. I that's like, again, just like the game, they got the homes, they got the buildings, they got the, the dystopian vibe down so well. It's just you know, a like for a like great adaptation, but I think at points even better than the game. I mean, this is every dollar that was spent on making the most expensive television show of all time uh, makes total sense here. You know, you look at where the production went to, how the performances were, everything about this was so earned. And I'm loving the fact that people are enjoying the show, that everyone that I praised this game to, that I would talk about this game nonstop now over the decade (laughs) over the decade yeah you know this daniel you know how much you know we've been talking about this game that now people can watch this show and have that exact same reaction like there's there's no difference from when my mom is watching the show and feeling it and loving it as as much as i did so recently like my little sister she's 14 years old she put on the game and she hasn't watched the show yet she wants to power through the game first and it's been such an exciting experience watching her play the game and my mom watching her play it as well and being like, oh, that's Sarah. Oh, oh, oh she's going to die. And my sister's like, what? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, mom. <laughs> so, many, so many great moments that are happening here. Um, I'm not laughing at Sarah dying. I'm no, laughing of at course. mom just spoiling it. <laughs> just spoiling it. God. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. So funny. Uh, but for, for me, myself, also uh, an obvious real gem, Pedro Pascal, Bella Ramsey delivered characters on screen to a point where it was in disbelief of how fantastic they were. They killed it. They were absolutely immersive in their roles. They brought a level to Joel and Ellie that we didn't get in the game. And this is no shade to Troy Baker, or Ashley Johnson. What they did was phenomenal and untouchable. But what Bella Ramsey and Pedro Pascal have done is carved their own path, yet still make it relatable to what we've seen before. Um, Daniel, please give us your final recommendation for The Last of Us, season one. What what more can you say after these nine weeks of talking about it every week, right? Like, you know, The Last of Us is one of the greatest video games ever made, and now it's one of the greatest HBO shows ever made. It really is up there with some of the best, you know, shows that we've gotten in the last 10 years that it is only going to grow and be more ravenous and take over, like cordyceps and fungi taking over everywhere. Um, it is going to just multiply this fan base. You know, we we know there's more, hopefully more games coming. We know Factions is coming, but there's so much story to tell, especially with part two, especially with what you could do outside of the Joel and Ellie. And I just cannot wait to see how this show grows, how this community grows, how this series grows over the next decade. Like Anthony said, like you said, Shay, this series has opened up the Last of Us world to so many people, so many people that never got to play the games, who don't play video games, you know, don't think they're coordinated to play video games, or just don't have the time for video games. This has been a series that has opened up this story that we all love. This episode, this entire series proves why it is some of the best storytelling that we've seen in a really long time. And, and like I said at the top of this, one of the best shows of all time coming from one of the best video games of all time. This is this is what The Last of Us is, and I'm just so happy that we've been able to go on this journey over the last nine weeks talking about it because it's just, it's incredible, and I'm just so happy it's in the world. It's a real gem. Absolutely. And I want to I wanna thank my Cordyceps compadres for joining me 
uh, every week to talk about this show and how much we loved it and and what an experience it absolutely was. And uh, thank you for allowing me to 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 guide us through like the fungi that I was. Yeah, we get to hibernate now. The you know the cordyceps gets us to hibernate for for a little while for winter you know, until season yeah. two. Season two. Oh my god, yeah. I can't wait. Or when Hope- factions comes out, you know, like uh, or. Oh, what? Last else? of Us Part Two, PS Five. Oh you my know? God, I can't wait! I can't Who knows? wait! I just, I, Who knows? I hope this opens up the door for more gaming as well. The gaming community is amazing, and I hope more people now go and play the first game or, or go and want to know what happens in the second season. Go ahead and play the second game. You know, there's just so many uh, places you can go from here. But I want to thank everyone for joining us along the ride for the Last of Us After Show that we've been doing on the movie podcast. A uh, huge shout out to our friends over at Crave for, you know, providing us these episodes and providing us the opportunity as well for these amazing interviews that we got to do. And I'm sure there are just more in the future. I'm already going to manifest it out there. Uh, Bella Ramsey and Pedro Pascal uh, on the movie podcast one day. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. You know, if you only yeah. will it, it'll happen. If you yes. build it, they will come, right? Uh, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. So thank you once again. If you are following us on youtube make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe of course leave us a comment what did you think about the entire season of this episode as well join our discord where we're having a lot of great conversations in there also uh we have a last of a spoiler chat open right now so join us in there and talk about the show we'd love to hear from you uh if you're following us on twitter instagram and tiktok it is at the movie podcast so please join us there comment as well give us a like or five stars or whatever it is if you're following if you listen to us on any podcast app Give us out five stars or, or the subscribe or a comment or whatever it is. We'd love to read it out on the show. Also, that was this time with the movie podcast, and we'll see you next.